the blind prophet Tiresias, the first transsexual in mythology, changed sex altogether seven times. He lost his eyesight in the course of a debate between the gods on sexual pleasure. Questioned by Zeus, Tiresias explained that if sexual gratification were to be divided into ten parts, nine parts would go to women and one to men. Hera, furious for the secret to have been revealed, blinded Tiresias. But Zeus, in his magnanimity, bestowed upon him the gift of clairvoyance. The beautiful Liriope, whom the river god Cephasus, one day waylaid in a meander and proceeded to seduce, gave birth to a boy. She called him Narcissus. Impressed upon to know if her child would find fulfillment in his pride, Tiresias answered, only if he knows not his own self. For long the diviner's words seem unfounded. The following story, Death Device, and Narcissus' peculiar madness demonstrated the veracity of his words. Narcissus' exceptional beauty grew with each passing year. Any number of young men and women longed for him, but vanity and conceit were so intertwined with the fiber of his youthful beauty that none could even begin to move him, that none could even begin to move him. Impervious to love, he remained unto himself, to himself. But one day, Narcissus, a nymph caught sight of you. Echo was her name, Echo was her name, Echo was her name, Echo was her name. Once effusively talkative, she could now only repeat the very last syllables of a long sentence. This was once again the handiwork of Hera. To tell the truth, Echo spent her time narrating endless stories to Zeus's wife in order to keep her attention away from her husband chasing after nymphs. As inevitably happens in cases such as these, the truth was found out. In her fury, she deprived Echo of her voice. The moment the nymph laid eyes on you, her love was all-consuming. She began to follow you secretly. Spellbound by your beauty, she could not keep her eyes away from you. She could not keep her eyes away from you. She could not keep her eyes away from you. someone one Trembling from the depths of her being, she emerged from the tree's shadows to embrace you. To embrace you rebuked her disdainfully as you fled from her sight. Loosen your grasp on my person. I would rather die than have to do with you. Spurned by he who loved only himself, her heart broken, she took refuge in a cave. Secluded in her sorrow, she let herself wither away. 
It is even said that she had become so shriveled her bones had merged into the surrounding rock. Only her voice remained, echoing through the mountains. One day, one of your victims, with hands raised to the heavens, implored, May he fall in love with himself and never possess the object of his love, the object of his love. Nemesis, the goddess of revenge, heard the prayer and granted it. You came across the undulating silver waters, untroubled by neither bird nor beast. It is here, it is here that you, Narcissus, first contemplated your own eyes, your perfect lips. And without knowing why, you longed for yourself and mistook a shadow for a body. You did not perceive that the object of your desire was nowhere to be found. With an unquenchable gaze, you contemplated a beautiful deceit, betrayed by your own eyes, betrayed by your own eyes. Your looks are already losing their sheen. Once loved by echo, loved by echo the strength and vigor of your body are becoming absent, becoming absent, becoming absent, becoming absent. Still staring at the pool's reflection, Narcissus' final words were, Child that I have loved in vain, alas. And as he breathed his last, Echo joined in his suffering and repeated, echoing his voice, alas. Alas, alas. Narcissus died finally of a love he could not satiate. His body was never found. And instead, bloomed a flower the color of saffron, ringed with white petals.